Reproductive science, marrying skill and knowledge to the magic of nature, can make the impossible happen. And here it will provide a wondrous window into the beginning of human life. Dr. Mark Sauer doesn't claim to make miracles, but about once a week his fertility team will help to bring a baby into the world through in vitro fertilization, or IVF. With Dr. Sauer's help, Inez and Daryl Pearson will have a 50-50 chance at creating a new life. IVF really is a natural process even though it's outside the human body because it allows us to put sperm and egg together and create an embryo, uh, which is no different than what happens in nature. But unlike in nature, remarkable access to Dr. Sauer's laboratory will allow us to observe the encounter of sperm and egg in extraordinary detail. So we'll be seeing you a lot over the next few weeks. Okay. okay. We're just ready to get started now. <laughs> you can go ahead and push it back in and try it again, maybe a little more slowly. Inez begins a regimen of hormone injections that will stimulate her ovaries to produce more than the customary one egg per month. Like a dart, okay? Do it like this. I'll squeeze the skin. You'll wipe with alcohol. Wipe first. with alcohol. Like so, okay? Oh, God. A little bit faster than that. Yeah, like that. Oh, my God. It's time. As hoped, many eggs are ready. As she is put to sleep, Inez delivers a drowsy wish. There on the screen. The remarkable egg that begins human life is a single cell, no wider than a hair, barely visible to the eye. Most people have no idea how small a cell is. If I crudely scrape the inside of my mouth, I have about 10,000 cells under my fingertip. These things are really small. You can't see that without a microscope. And yet that can make a human. See how amazing this is? One by one, 27 precious eggs are retrieved. When the safety of the eggs is assured, Daryl semen is collected. Embryologist Bob Prosser will filter out the dead and less healthy sperm. Okay, this is the before sample. It has not been processed. And so from this, we can compare this with the post-processing sample. You can see that the sample is much cleaner. Almost all of the sperm are motile. And uh, they look like happy campers. Dr. Prosser positions the egg, magnified 400 times, and readies the single sperm he has selected from a pool of hundreds. The sperm is injected, and the critical moment for fertilization arrives. Like a great celestial director, he repeats the procedure, guiding sperm to another egg. If this is the meeting that proves successful, we are observing, in the immediacy of real time, the first miracle of many that will lead to the life of a child. Overnight, DNA from Inez's eggs and Daryl's sperm unite. 
and 13 of the 27 eggs show the telltale dimple that indicates success. It's working. With exquisite grace, one cell becomes two, two become four. Each duplicates the original, unique DNA. The enchanted progression of cell division continues. For five days, the embryos are monitored. Finally, the division creates masses of cells known as blastocysts. And any one of these blastocysts may become a part of the Pearson family. This embryo here, if you look at the outer shell on this center embryo, it's very thin. The embryo is getting ready to hatch out of its shell. It's a very nice blastocyst. The inner cell mass is going to become the embryo itself, what you normally think of when you think of a baby. Arms, head, legs, toes, fingers. And actually this inner cell mass is uh, where you find the embryonic stem cells, which are very much in the center of the genetic revolution that's going on right now. Embryonic stem cells stand in the vanguard of human life. These magical all-purpose cells will eventually transform into every cell type in the human body. This extraordinary potential of stem cells has made isolating them one of the holy grails of science, although a controversial one. We have very well uh, formed and uh, ready to transfer type of blasts. After six days of growth in the lab, Inez's embryos are ready for implanting. She's shown what might turn out to be her first baby picture. <laughs> this is where the fun begins because now we have something to track. It's real. It's a pregnancy. That's what everybody's been hoping for. <laughs> Watching this embryo take form to a fetus and the fetus hopefully later to a baby is really the fun part of this job. The first thing you're going to notice is that right here is a pregnancy sac. Okay. Okay, and you see a little area kind of fluttering right mm -hmm. there? That's the heartbeat of the baby. Can I have a picture of that? I'm going to give you uh, lots of pictures <laughs> here. Now you have some, God has truly blessed you. You actually have two, because you see there's one baby there. Okay. And then you see the other baby over here. You get a nice view. Huh. Right there, you can see the heartbeat fluttering. See that right by the X? Mm -hmm. So you have twins. I hope that's good news. Yeah. This one. It's during this period where all of a sudden the first system you see kicking in is the circulatory system. You see blood vessels form, the heart is in there beginning to, beginning to beat, and it's very critical because an embryo can only grow so large without its own circulatory system. At 22 days, the tiny heart, no bigger than a poppy seed, begins to beat. Soon the embryo is pumping its own blood through the umbilical cord back to its mother for a fresh supply of oxygen and nutrients. Now just a simple tube, this heart will grow into a four-chamber structure able to beat 100,000 times a day. For Inez and Daryl, this understanding has begotten two lives. Lives that quickly reveal their own resilience. Born prematurely by emergency caesarean, Kayla and Kasim Pearson spend their first weeks in the hospital, but soon grow healthy and strong.